Hey, this is not Project Runway, this is Project Rewind. We are going to recap the last five lessons from our previous Sundays and go over all of those things that we've touched base about. So you should have received your project in the mail for our rewind of lessons here. We're going to look at baptisms, we're going to look at 12 disciples, we're going to look at parables, healings, teachings. We're going to go through all of that and just kind of recap uh, the past few weeks. So hopefully, uh, if you received your project, you were able to write down three different pictures or symbols that reminded you of our lesson on baptism. Um, or um, write down three pictures or symbols that reminded you of our lesson on the 12 disciples. Same thing with the parables, the healings, and the teachings. Um, so if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that. Fill those in. Uh, I think that's just kind of a fun project and a good way to kind of remember those lessons from previous weeks. You can go back and watch the videos on YouTube if you forget some of the readings that we did. Um, each one of the readings that we did each week gave me a different symbol or different thing to think about. So I, I used each one of those and went back through the YouTube videos to, to reread some of those lessons. So our first lesson was on baptism, uh, the baptism of Jesus. And Jesus' baptism marked him as the Messiah and launched Jesus into the beginning of his ministry. So remember when we made that catapult and we were reminded that uh, baptism launches us into ministry. Um, it, baptism was more than a call to repent and prepare for the work of God. It was also a call to follow Jesus and his teachings. Um, so do you know, like your own baptismal birthday, if you've been baptized, do you know what day to celebrate that? If not, contact me. I'll look it up. Uh, if you haven't been baptized, let Pastor I know. And we'd love to walk you through what that entails and what's involved with following Jesus. It's an adventure that will change your life. And so... Let us know if that's something that you're interested in, in pursuing, if you haven't been baptized. Um, if you still have your, your project on the baptism lesson, try this. Cut out the picture of the water, right? That was our symbol for that particular lesson. Cut out that picture of the water and tape it to your dishwasher or your washing machine or your sink in your bathroom as a reminder of being made clean by God. So that way, every time you see it, You'll remember that lesson on baptism. So that's our challenge for, for our baptism lesson um, from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. That was kind of the story we looked at of Jesus beginning his ministry with baptism. The second lesson that we looked at was on the disciples, right? And so we read from Mark chapter 9, verse 33 through 37, and saw that Jesus' disciples believed that he was the Messiah, which meant that they also believed he would need a successor. So they were arguing amongst themselves about who was the greatest among them and who would take over when Jesus was gone. And Jesus overheard these arguments and turned their idea of what was great upside down. In Jesus' eyes, being great meant being last of all and servant of all, right? Do you remember that a few weeks back? Whereas the first will be last and the last will be first. So in what ways have you been trying to be a servant of all in these last few weeks? I'm sure you've had opportunities, so keep that in mind. What are ways that you can put yourself last, that your desires, your wishes, in order to serve other people? So with the disciples, the symbol that we had was this number 12, okay? So this number 12. Um, I'm trying to think of what else has a number 12 on it. Um, I know, so why don't you do this? Why don't you cut out this picture of number 12 and tape it to the back of a clock in your house, okay? Okay. Um, and this way you'll forget about it and it'll be back there and you won't notice it again until you either sell your house or sell the clock or move the clock. Um, and the disciples were forgetful sometimes. So it's a good way to, to make that connection. Um, this way too, when you find it, uh, you'll be surprised like the disciples were. They were constantly surprised all the time with the things that Jesus was doing and teaching them. So that was our second lesson. First one was baptism. The second one was the disciples. And our third lesson was on the parables, and we read from Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 17, and learned about how parables can confuse people. Um, some people will hear the parables and not understand. Some people will see what God is doing and still not understand. Jesus often talked using parables and stories that used everyday people, everyday jobs, everyday objects to teach about God's kingdom, right? So Jesus often used parables to directly and indirectly challenge the status quo and the power structures of the day. 
So parables were kind of a backdoor way of challenging people without them realizing they were being challenged. Now, some of the parables are difficult to understand. We talked about this. Um, there's mystery there that makes them more holy. Uh, reflecting on the mysterious nature of God is a holy act. And so, in some ways, Jesus is being confusing so that people spend time actually thinking about God and what God's up to. So with the parables, we have the symbol of a lamp, right? So we've got the symbol of a lamp. And the symbol of a lamp represents light and wisdom and insight. Um, so what we can do is cut out this picture of the lamp and tape it underneath a lamp in your house or inside of the lampshade uh, of a lamp in your house or behind some kind of light, somewhere near on a lamp or a light so that you'll forget about it again. And then maybe when you stumble upon it, you can reflect back and think of all of the lessons um, that you've learned from Jesus since you hid that lamp, right? What are the things that Jesus is still teaching you? What are the things, the questions that you have still about God and about Jesus? So that's our third lesson was on the parables of Jesus. Our fourth lesson was on the healings of Jesus. So in Mark chapter 5, verse 35 through 43, we see that Jesus performed a miracle. He raised a girl from the dead. This girl had died. And these healing miracles revealed the power of faith and Jesus' ability to heal the divisions in our community as he healed the physical bodies of others. So not only was he healing people physically, but spiritually and emotionally on the inside as well. He trusted in God, and he asked others to do the same. So an important detail of the story is that Jesus touched the dead girl's body, touched the dead girl's hand. And according to Jewish law, just touching another dead body uh, made a person unclean. So Jesus disregarded this law for the sake of life. And Jesus broke rules and in order to bring people back into relationship with God and with one another. So keep that in mind. That's an important thing to remember. It's okay to break rules in Jesus' name if you're bringing people back into relationship with God and with one another. So with the healings, the symbol that we need to remember is this, uh, this bandage, right? This band-aid. Um, so cut out that picture of the band-aid and tape it to a box of band-aids or bandages or tape it to a first aid kit that's in your house somewhere. So whenever you get a cut or a bruise and you have to go to that first aid box, you can see that bandage symbol and you can remember God's healing power in Jesus. And you can give thanks to God for giving us bodies that heal and praise God that, that God is bringing healing to you in that moment without you even realizing it. All right, so that was our fourth lesson. Our fifth lesson was on Jesus' teachings, right? And we looked at Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 29. Jesus concluded the Sermon on the Mount by calling his followers to act, not just hear what he was saying, but actually do it. Believe it, and not just believe it and think it, but actually to do it. Uh, so he called believers to build the foundation of their faith in action, a solid foundation, right? Not on sand, not on a lazy, false, insecure foundation. So only those who put their words into practice will withstand the storms that come with a life of faith. So the teachings, remember in that story of Matthew, we heard about the person who built their house on the rock and the person who built their house on sand and the one who built their house on the rock, it lasted, right? And so with this teaching lesson, we remember uh, a net because a net is what Jesus was uh, using as a metaphor for catching people, right? He, he gets these disciples who are fishermen, and he says, we're going to catch people for God, and we're going to teach them about God. So that symbol of a net will remind us of Jesus' teachings. Now remember that uh, not only was it used to catch people for God, um, but it's, we can cut this picture out, and what we can do is we can tape this one to the inside of like a baseball glove, if you have one, or a winter glove, and just tape it on the inside, or just stick it on the inside, so then when sports start up again, or winter comes around again, and you put your hand in that glove, um, you'll be surprised to find that little symbol in there, and you can think of how God is using you to catch people and catch others and share with them about Jesus, right? To catch other people for God and teach them about Jesus. So those were our, our you know, we're reviewing, those were our five lessons that we learned these last five weeks. We learned about, about baptism, with the symbol of water, we learned about the 12 disciples. 
We learned about the parables with this lamp as a symbol. We learned about Jesus' healings uh, with the symbol of a bandage. And we learned about Jesus' teachings with the symbol of a net. So we learned a lot in these last five weeks. Jesus is busy, involved in ministry, and we get to be a part of that. So here's some questions for you to ponder. What is something new that you learned uh, about what it means to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus? Think about that. If you could choose one of these stories that we went back and were reviewing, and you could go back in time and be involved in that story and see in person what Jesus was up to, which one of those stories would you want to go back in time and be a part of? I think for me, I'd love to go back to that story of uh, the friends that carried their, their friend on a mat who was paralyzed, and they busted the roof of that house down so they could lower their friend down to Jesus. I would want to see that. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty amazing uh, story of faith, Jesus' healing power, and a testimony of what friends who love each other will do for one another. Do you think acting on Jesus' teachings could change your life? If so, how? Why or why not? I know it has mine, uh, acting on Jesus' teachings. I got to a point where I had read a lot of the Bible, and I was like, I'm going to see, I'm going to put this into practice and see if this is true, right? I wanted to know if the Bible was true. So I started practicing the things that Jesus was teaching, and and it's changed my life. I've encountered people I would never have met before. I've seen God work healing power in people through recovery and through physical healings and, and emotional healings. I've seen Jesus' teachings transform people's lives. Um, I've seen the parables change my own life as I continue to wrestle with them year after year. Um, they, they take on new meaning uh, depending on what's going on in my life. So I'm just, I'm thankful for these five lessons and our chance to review and rewind those lessons a little bit. So I'd like you to grab some water, make the sign of the cross on your forehead, and receive this blessing. May God bless you. May God call you. May God confuse you. May God heal you. And may God teach you. Amen. Blessings this week, and thank you again for joining me. We'll look forward to starting a new unit next week. Take care.